Ladies and gentlemen, how you doing once again? This is Hector Bosa, and this is my show. No, this it's is called, not your show. This is my show. show. Excuse and my me. Here is Jamie Hickson. All for crying out loud. That's right. Not We're even two improve. seconds, and you try to barge in or, or uh, up in uh, here. Uh, oh, What's I'm wrong sorry. with you? I, they told me. They, they told me this was my show. No, then, this is not your show. Oh, you okay, got your uh, show. Oh, uh, okay, okay. You could go foul then, up then, on then, that. Then, then, you I don't go goof up, up on I, that. I don't foul up. If I foul up so much, why am I here? Because I'm good, damn it. You need me for ratings and people to call. No, so you're good for. You're good just for making a. What's idiot out of yourself. Put my name up there. You no. got a picture of me already. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this is in the bleachers. Jamie Took Hickson. you long enough. Jamie Hickson's See, look on at my this. Le- Jamie Hickson's on my left, and he'll, he's already huffing puffed. I'm huffing yeah, and puffing because you're why. making an idiot I, out of I yourself know, once I again. I don't, I don't know who's making an idiot. I'm you. I'm the one screaming and yelling and, and, and faces turning. Because like you're acting matter. like an idiot. How am I acting like an idiot? Look at you. For one, you but said it was out. your this, show when it's not. And for another, you butchered the it, title look of look the show. Look at this. Look at this. Another, another great masterful. Who is your board monitor? Boy, your board I, I think we've, I think we've got some ghosts yeah, running you, around over here. Damn, you know, they the told me. It must be the Billy Goat. They, they the told goat. me yes. that there were some ghosts of CTV producers and yeah, employees yeah, past yeah, they, that were still making their way around here yeah, late yeah, at they, night. So yeah. I'm wondering, maybe these guys and girls are up to their old yeah, tricks yeah, again. Exactly, because they, they, oh boy, they're butchering your show right now. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? Not as badly as you no, are. No, no, I, 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 I'm the best thing you got right now. Yeah, I, the I, best at making name, an idiot of yourself. Name, my name is Hector Bosa, and I am the host of the Home Invaders Variety Show, the best variety show there is and talk show there is. But I never got the credit for it, but that's okay. But, you know. Gee, I wonder I, why. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. But my point is, okay, now, we're going to talk about girls soccer play who Playoffs win. You, look at this. Yeah. Look, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Yeah. It, specifically, what's going on uh, on Staten in, Island? Yeah. In our neck Island of the woods base. first. Yes, it's for, been a long a time since we've actually talked about what's going on with the Staten Island schools over here. Yes. Specifically, first off, what's going on in soccer? And I see uh, our friends over at uh, St. Joseph Hill wound up advancing in uh, the semifinals. This is in the Catholic League, of course. Yes. They wound up winning 3 nothing over Maria Regina. Yes. So they're going to be in the semis coming up, and it's going to be another Staten Island school, St. Joseph by the Sea. They're yeah. going to be scoring off against each other uh, Wednesday night. And look at that guy that bowled two, two 300 games. Yeah, Kevin Buono is the, is the name of the young man in question. And Staten speaking Island of St. Joseph taking, by taking the Sea, the, you know, he wound up different. graduating from there. And good, good for him. Bowling 300 is, is a piece of work. I'll tell and you now what. he's a student at Pace University. Oh, good. Now let's see what uh, what else do we have on Staten Island? That because this is this is a Staten Island based sports show also. So I don't know why we don't have to necessarily talk about the Jets, the Giants, because everybody talks about that. Eventually we'll get to it. But you know what? You, let me see. JB Football, Tottenville 12, South Shore 6, Curtis 28, Port Richmond 6. Here, you read off. Proud something. to see the guys at Curtis still getting it done on the football and field. And they always have a good program because a lot of people have come from Curtis High School. Yeah. Wearing the high school. A lot of football players. I think there's been more football players coming out of Staten Island than any sports. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. Actors, that's true. Yes, and so forth. And, but football players, and then second would be baseball, I think. Yeah. But go ahead, read off the the rest right. Of uh, we mentioned the Catholic leagues before. Uh, yeah, over in the yeah, uh, yeah. swimming circuit, Notre Dame Academy wound up winning eighty-eight to seventy over Carney. Yeah. And uh, going back to C again, they wound up winning ninety-one to sixty-one over McClancy. Unfortunately, St. John Villa m- did not meet a similar fate. They wound up losing to Malloy, which has a really powerful athletic program, yeah. 87 to 73. In case you're not familiar with Archbishop Malloy, no, that is the school that produced the former NBA player, Kenny Anderson. Look at that. Kenny Anderson can't get better than that. You know what? And they have something in tennis, too. Ahead, yeah, this tennis. is also in the Catholic League. Uh, Notre Dame Academy. They wound up um, 
having a, a match taking place. Uh, the, the duo of Kristen Buttermark and Olivia Mori wound up uh, winning in straight set, actually in three sets. It was 6 4, 3 6, and 6 3. But what do you think? Over a, uh, a duo from Notre Dame. Now, what do you think of the football team, the JV? I mean, I, I, I just mentioned it before. You know, JV, you know, Tottenville and South Shore. Tottenville, again, another mm-hmm. good football. You know, like I said before, Stadon has always had a good football team mm-hmm. program. Well, every co- Tottenville every has school. had some great yes. teams in the past, and that's all a testament to the guy that runs the program there, Jim yeah. Munson, who's yeah. not only the head coach, but is also the athletic director over at Tottenville. You know, and then you got Macy. Oh, Wagner wins on senior day. Wagner women's soccer team pointed a senior day victory behind no today. He read that. That's good. C- CSI. Oh, my goodness. CSI post CUNY qualifying win. The College of Staten Island women's. Oh, God. All right. Yep, for, women's tennis. Good for CSI women's. It's good to hear about good old Staten Island because, you know, we're left out. Thank you, Staten Island Advance, for people. You know what? There's a lot of sports going on right now. Speaking of which. You know what? You know what's happening? You got the World Series coming up. Mm -hmm. You got basketball starting. The New York Knicks. Tomorrow. The new new powerhouse, New York Knicks, as they're claiming now. Like I said, I'm just repeating what I'm hearing now. I'm not saying that they... They're the greatest team in the world. I'm not saying that they're the worst. You got to see it to believe it. That's all I'm going to say. Well, somebody needs to tell the Cleveland Cavaliers that because that's new. That's going to be news to them. Yeah, because th- th- I tell you one thing: the Cavaliers are the team to beat. The Golden State Warriors are going to be the team to beat right now, and that's and that's the truth. But you know, going down, going down the aisle, we have. Patriots 27, Steelers 16. Yeah, this is Tell from me about it. This is from uh, the NFL yesterday. Yes. This just goes to show you, first off, how much the Steelers miss Ben Roethlisberger because he just underwent uh, surgery to repair uh, a partially torn meniscus in his knee, and he wound up getting benched for yesterday's game, and they had to go to Landry Jones, a kid from Oklahoma who is just – Totally, totally unproven. Yesterday was just his third NFL start, and quite frankly, there were times when he really looked like he uh, did not have the NFL experience. But then again, they're going up against the Patriots, and Tom Brady just had that offense going like a well-oiled machine the entire time. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, Brady uh, connected with Ron, something of a nature, with a, of a 36-yard touchdown. Hey, you know what? Hey, that's good. The Chiefs, 27, Saints, 21. Take it away. I'll Once again, away. the Saints, a, a total liability on the defensive front. Alex Smith just had a, a really solid game. The numbers didn't really show much, but he had a solid game. He made the plays when he was supposed to. And now the Chiefs are pretty much trying to keep up with the Raiders for the AFC West lead. Exactly. And you know what? Speaking of... The Raiders, which it came out to, 33, Jaguars 16. You called it on Eric's show. Mm-hmm. That was going to be a tough game. Yep. Anybody could have taken it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? The Raiders took it. Like I also said, the Raiders were going to win that game. So go ahead. Talk about the Raiders and the Jaguars. As good a start as the Raiders have had this season, you have to look at at what their schedule has been like. They've pretty much been the product, the byproduct of a rather generous schedule, if you ask me. And, yeah. and quite frankly, they beat a Jaguars team that, that they were so much better than. They're much better at quarterback. They're much better at receiver. They're a hell of a lot better defensively. Not only that, but the young man that's uh, QBing the Jaguars right now he just continues to have major, major problems taking care of the football. This is something that he really needs to try and learn down the road. Well, you know, the Lions 20, Redskins 17. That's Again, a big, a big tough, win for the Lions. Exactly. They've, they've, they've gotten themselves off to a pretty decent start this first half of the season. Let's and, see what they could do the second half, though. And Bengals, Cincinnati Bengals 31, Browns 17. Let's hear it. That's Let's taking see. candy from a baby right there. The Browns are just, are just horrific, and the Jets are going to be playing the Browns uh, next weekend. The Bengals, quite frankly, should have won this game, and they did. And 
in that game, the Jets versus uh, Jets Browns, versus Browns is going to be this coming Sunday. Is that the great uh, battle of the, the last place teams? Uh, <laughs> the battle, it's, bottom of the barrel. Teams? It's definitely going to be a battle of last place teams, though. You know what? Let me see. Okay, the you got the Colts thirty-four, Titans twenty-six. That's a Big, big win for the Colts Andrew right Luck. there. Andrew a Luck. Seven, a seven-yard pass, t- TD pass. Come on. Andrew Luck showed why he can be a superstar quarterback in this league. He's mounted numerous come-from-behind victories with less than two minutes to go in a game. And he, once again, he struck again. And the Buccaneers 34, the 49ers 17. A very, that, very Jekyll and Hyde Tampa Bay team that you're looking at. But going up against a 49ers squad that is just horrific. And once again, having Colin Kaepernick at quarterback. I guess those uh, protest uh, comments that he made are, are really starting to gang up on him. Not only that, but he just looked lost you know going what? up against that Tampa D. Maybe he's got that in his mind, but I... You can't you can't blame them though. You can't blame them for that. I, I I mean think about it. You know people are getting killed left and right. All right. Now I like to say all minorities. It's not just one gender. You know. But if you have to make a stand, at least he's taking a stand for something. And he's not the only one doing it. There was a high school team that I was reading about, and. Um, just because they took the stand, they got rid of them so that they wouldn't compete in the league anymore. And, you know, that, that's terrible where you just can't take a stand because all he's taking a stand about is how they're treating minority people. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's incl- – now, even though there's a dis- uh, statistics saying otherwise mm-hmm. that, you know, but let's say this much – the man is taking a stand. Is he hurting anybody by taking a stand? I don't think so. Do you? Is he taking a stand? He's definitely taking a stand. He's taking, He's a, taking stand. a stand for minorities. Yes, but what I'm saying is, but is he hurting anybody? No, right? not at all. But why are people are going crazy that, oh, he's hurting? He's not hurting. A because for anybody. one thing, oh, he's been they're, protesting. they're like either Carlos. misinterpreting right. or misunderstanding what his stand is about. Well, look at John Carlos and the other two people. Tommy Where Smith. Tommy Smith. They went like this. Why? That was a big stink back then. Of course it was a big stink back then. Because everybody united, not just one particular race. I mean, you know who the majority of the race was, but everybody united for crying out yeah. loud. But you know what? Again. And, f- and forty-five, more than 45 years after the fact, John Carlos and Tommy Smith and there was still another guy. get there was another asked guy. There was about. Another guy. Who was the third guy? Do you remember? Well, John Carlos and Tommy Smith are the two guys uh, that I know yeah, about. Yeah, but there was there was three, and that's for sure, if I remember correctly. Uh, okay, uh, Chargers, 33, Falcons, 30. Oh, that was an OT game. That was a dangerous the game. The only too. reason why it even went over time is because the Falcons – Self-destructed four with a one. seventeen point lead. And they and they tried a four and one go try to go for a four and one and they didn't do it instead tried of going one. for it on fourth down and it cost them badly. You know what? Okay, but let me I'm gonna go down a list now because New England is now six and one. Again. Right now, the Patriots are the best team in the AFC. Uh Buffalo is four and three. Buffalo lost a game that uh Quite frankly, they should have won. They went up against the Dolphins team. And for the record, the Dolphins wound up beating the Bills 28-17 yesterday. Yesterday was such a big, big win for the Dolphins, especially when you consider that their second-half defense was just tremendous. And also, the kid that they had at running back, Jay Ajay, right. a, a second straight 200-yard rushing performance. Damn, that's good. Do you know he's yeah. just the fourth running back in NFL history? Really? To get back to back 200 yard rushing games? No. Who the those? others? You know who the. Does it say here? <laughs> the others? Use your, use your, use your, use your, well, your, one of them is definitely OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson, yes. OJ Simpson is one. Right. The yeah. others, and I'm going to see if I can find them over is here. Is it here? 
Uh, I don't think so. No, unfortunately not. But he's just he's just one of uh, four running backs to get back to back 200 yard rushing games for career. See, well, for the record, yes. the other ones. Well, well, we're gonna tr we're gonna well, I'm gonna try and find yeah, that out right that, now. While you do that, I'm just gonna lay off. Tell you one thing, uh, he's gonna be uh, somebody's uh, fantasy uh, football pick yeah. coming up. Yeah, uh, Miami is three and four, and not, last but not least. By the way, the other three yeah. running backs, well, O.J. Simpson, Simpson, who's in the Hall of Fame, yes, Earl Campbell, Earl who's Campbell. also in the Hall of Fame, yes. Deservedly and Ricky Williams. So. Deservedly so. Yeah, Earl Deservedly Campbell so. had a tremendous Damn career. Right. If right. it hadn't been for his knees, I think he could have gotten between ten and 15,000 yards yeah, rushing. They, they, they worked him like a horse. Yeah. They, they worked him like a damn horse. He pounded the ball every single Eric time that Dickinson. he played for the, for yeah, the, you know, for the Oilers. You know who, who doesn't get credit? Eric Dickerson. That was a one-man show. Yeah. For, for the L.A. Rams. Oh, Jesus. You know he still has the single-season rushing record, yeah, right? Yeah, but my point is – if you needed, if you needed a touchdown or a game, that was, he he won the team by himself. That yeah. was that was it. Get, just give the ball to him. That was it. You know. I think what hurt him the most, though, then he didn't one have offense and the defense behind. Well, the with the with the Rams, he actually had a pretty good offensive team going yeah. with him. I mean, he had. But it was basically him. Mm -hmm. it, it was basically. And him. another problem was, he let his contract demands really get in the way of a really good career. Mm. You know, I mean, he had contract demands with the Rams and the Colts, and then he wound up finishing his career with, uh, with the Los Angeles Raiders. Yeah, and you know what? Now the, now the New York Jets, two and five, good I'll, game to win. I'll tell you right but now. I tell the you, Jets, Fitzpatrick's got to gotta cool his Jets, man. Mm -hmm. I'm you, Fitzpatrick's the Jets cool his won Jets. yesterday's game. It was a big win for them, first of all, because it snapped a four-game losing streak. And two, the Jets were able to keep a lead this time, even though they coughed it up just before halftime. But the reason why the Jets won this game was not because of offense. It was the defense, defense. that won it for yeah. them. Yeah, defense, the, the thing with Jets, Jets always had it really – Good defensive team. Even last year, they won a good defensive team. Mm -hmm. But now, Geno Smith played his heart out. He, he didn't says, play terribly. He yeah, actually exa looked okay. Exactly. But and then on that sack, he wound up tearing up his knee. Now he's gone for the rest of the season. There he and according to one source, he's not. He says he's not so bad. But he's not playing, according to another source. Nope. He's out for the season. Well, the Jets, the Jets already confirmed that he definitely is out for the year. He has to undergo surgery. Fitzpatrick. Oh, that's another com lost complained, cause. Com actually, compl here is a man. Here is a man that was hustling for a three-year contract. Hey, listen, when you need a job, you'll hustle to get a three-year job. So forth. you need a job. That you can't. You got to take the. You can't take the man's livelihood away from him. Like they've done already with certain cases that we discussed about mm -hmm. in other shows, mm -hmm. which again they're lopsiding it. They're doing the lopsided thing. They're doing the you know well he only verbally abused him so he shouldn't be out of the league. No, he should have gotten uh, this the same suspension as everybody else, or bring back the other two guys and say nothing more about it. That's you know, it. it's really funny that you mention that because. One I of felt the, like J.J. for a minute there. <laughs> one, one of the parents of the Giants players ripped John Mara for his soft stance on Josh Brown. You know what? Like I said, you can't, you can't take the man's livelihood, but the least you can do is make him. I'll tell you right now, there are a lot of women. I would say there's maybe 90% of women are going to disagree and, with you and, big and, time. And, and, and again— well, that's because they're not playing. They got to feed their families. Believe it or not, people got to feed their family. Second of all, you know, we're, we're very forgiving. We're very forgiving people. You got to remember that. I mean, hell, look what's running for our president. Oh, bro. All right? That's but another my, but, lost but cause. My, but my point is, whether you like one or the other, they're not the greatest. All I'm going right? to say is I'll be happy when this is over in two weeks. And I can't wait. Oh, speaking of that, by the way, I have a special announcement. I'm going to do, like, the gentleman from Laughing. Yes, uh, I think his name was Pat Tolson. I am running for a borough president, ladies and gentlemen. And as, Wait, whoa, whoa. as one of the— Wait, whoa, whoa, stop, 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 stop. 
I thought I told you to stop it with all of this. Wait, let me off. tell you what. Let me tell you what one of my stances is before you talk. One of my stances, ladies and gentlemen, that pot here will be legalized and we will be using hemp to write on paper. Good night, everybody. To have newspaper writing instead of cutting trees. Ladies and gentlemen, we need hemp. Hemp is cheaper. Are you freaking hemp kidding me? So forth. Now, Do you it. even know how much of a ruckus people, you're causing people, right so, now on this show? So forth, yeah. As if you well, haven't I'm caused not. enough no, of a yeah, ruckus yes, already. Yeah, yes, exactly. I know. But yeah, I just wanted to say that. So go to my website, homeinvadersrightshow.com, and tell me what you And send what him hate mail. Yeah, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so now to <laughs> Oh brother. I don't know what's more ludicrous. <laughs> you making that statement right now or Ryan Fitzpatrick saying uh, that the coaches and the and the and the, and the and the and the and the bosses were not believing in him. I, I, Excuse me, if it hadn't been for your eleven picks, you would still be a starter right now. Uh, uh, the only reason why you got your job back is because Geno Smith is gone for the year. Exactly. Right. And there's a strong possibility. None of those guys will be back next yeah, year. because they got three other quarterbacks that just supposedly coming out. But, again, it's going to be a rebuilding stage for them. It's going to be a really, real, a really building, uh, rebuilding stage. Okay. What we got here? Let's go through it quick. You got Pittsburgh at 4-1. and one. No, I'm sorry. 4-3. and three. How did they do? Tell me all about it. Well, it was the Steelers that wound up losing to the Patriots yesterday. I'm going to tell you right now, the Steelers need Ben Roethlisberger back in the worst way. Granted, a surgery, a knee surgery like he has is right. no type of injury to, tr to rush back from. You need to take your time with this. But they did say that for a partially repaired meniscus ligament in the knee, mm -hmm. he is going to try and make it back for the next game. Hey, so he's a, he's if he know, can make it kid. back, then more power to him at the same time. The Steelers really need to pound the ball more to Le'Veon Bell because Landry Jones is not getting it done. Okay, Baltimore, three and four. Baltimore has gone from three wins in a row to start the year to four losses in a row. And I picked them to be my Cinderella team in the AFC this year. So far, I think a lot of the weaknesses that they have are really starting to catch up on them, specifically the lack of a, of a really good running game. You got Cincinnati Bengals again. We talked about them. They're at 3-4. and four, And we got the Cleveland Browns 0-7. Oh Cleveland is they're, horrific. They're, they're, they're horrendous. You Cincinnati, I still have some faith in them to try and make something of the second half of the season. They're still good at quarterback and at receiver. And I, and I think they have enough of a running game running game to try and Speak get them over the slack. <laughs> I am speaking uh, English, and, Un uh, unlike you. And, and Oakland. Uh, and Oakland is right now. Uh, cinco, uh, cinco, cinco, Oakland is the second best team in, in the league right now, but there's the matter of the second half of the season. I think the soft schedule that they've had to start off the year has really – gotten them to this point let's yeah, see what they could do what? the second half of the year but right now they're looking really good kansas city four and two kansas city is four and two really solid at quarterback they're very very well coached as well i'd like to see them pick it up defensively though defensively they've been a, a a real jekyll and high team this year denver broncos four and two i wish i had this schedule to see what they're playing next but the denver broncos who do you think of what Denver is actually holding their own right now, and they're playing tonight. They're hosting Houston. Oh, that's going to be And this is going to be a big, big game for the Broncos, a yes. big interconference matchup against a Houston team that also has something to try and prove. Okay. And this, this actually um, yes. uh, brings up a really interesting point. Right. Brock Osweiler, who was Peyton Manning's backup for about three or four weeks last season, right. is – going to be making his first appearance in Denver since he signed his contract with the Texans. Oh, so wow. you better believe he's going to try and he's going to try, he's gonna he's gonna try and come up with a yeah. big, big win yeah, over he's here. He's, he's going to downplay the whole thing, but obviously this is a big deal for him. Through San Diego at three and four. San Diego might be peaking at the right time, though, and Philip Rivers has found the fountain of youth so yeah, far. Finally. And also, yeah. Philip Rivers is the subject of... Of trade rumors. Why? Okay, tell me about it. Well, what, what, for one, the Chargers might be at that point where they might want to rebuild and go with a, a bit of a younger roster. Should the Jets go after him? 
from your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> <laughs> but what do the Jets have to give up? I have no idea. Could That's it be a, draft picks? Could it be players? Pick. They do have draft picks that I know of, if I remember correctly. They do have a, a pretty good draft pick. My so guess is the Jets would probably be tempted. Or they'll pass it up because they have they are they are at a rebuilding stage too. Because remember, they got all them older veterans. Not only that, but Philip Rivers is in his thirteenth so. season. You know what? He's at the point where he should be in the twilight of his career, but he's still playing well. You know what? The way we're built, like, as we were talking before. Um, a 37-year-old is not an old 37-year-old anymore. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, Peyton you know Manning won about. a championship at 39 I, last I, year. And that's supposedly old. You want to go back even further? Go ahead. Many, many years ago, there was a, a very famous and very good player, George Blanda, yes. who played supposedly into his late 50s and maybe even until he was 60 years of age. He's and he wasn't just a quarterback either. Right. He was also the place kicker. He was and he was a good player. That w- those, are, those people are very rare, but what I'm saying now, we're in an era. We're in an era right now where we are built for better things. We should be in better shape. And people yeah. are in better shape. Look at, look at the wrestlers now. Look at the wrestlers back then and look at the wrestlers now. The, the, wrestlers the wrestlers back, back then, then, they were basically like uh, light heavyweights. Yeah. Nowadays, some of them are, are tipping fit. 500 pounds. It's, well, no, that was Haystacks Calhoun. But, but when what I'm about the big is, show? Yeah, exactly. But they're nimble. They're yeah. very quick. They're still nimble. They've got so a quick, lot of quickness this time. You know, and, and then and big cast. Seven foot, skinny mm-hmm. kid. He's doing wonders, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you have other team, the, the people from Bray Wyatt, you know, he's going through the ropes, doing moves, so and so forth. You have people now that are very nimble Yeah. back then. I mean, more now, even though they, they talk about Ray Stevens and so forth, very good. I mean, it's not that they were unconditioned, but I think they're, there's more, there's better conditioning now, now that there is back then, because now people, they're taking care of their bodies because... Of the fact, what is it? Oh, okay, wait, wait. We got, fine, finally, finally, thank you very much. Thank you. No, it's okay. It's all right. Thank you very much. What's his name again? That's Rob, by the way. Th- thank you. Thank Rob, Rob. Asomaning is on the other side yes, of the glass yeah, yeah, once again. Yes, He's one yeah. of our new uh, co workers yes, here at the yes. station. And He's one of the new he has leaders. really yes. gotten his baptism by yeah. fire. Yes, look Directing what shows over yeah, there. Yeah, look what happened today. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know what? Again, people are in better shape. Thank you very much for the close, by the way. Uh, people are in better shape. And I think forget age, as long as they keep in shape, I think they're all right. And, you of know, course, uh, is, there's is still the different. issue of performance-enhancing yeah, drugs. exactly, which they pass sometimes because mm-hmm. they're getting better. You know, as, as fast as they get them and they crack down on them, there's always one that's, that's going by. Yeah, but there is a downfall to this whole thing. Yeah, if, if a lot say, of the wrestlers are dying young, though. Yeah, but not. I'm not even talking about wrestlers. I'm talking about football players and so forth a lot of uh, like ricky williams if i remember correctly mm-hmm. he wanted to get out early because he wanted to enjoy his life you know yeah his knees and so forth i mean think about it you're getting pounded left and right it, i mean this isn't a porno or something that you're going to get pounded and then be you know unless you do an exercise my point is ladies and gentlemen you're getting people getting on top of you hitting you left and right from behind it does sound like a porno flick. Oh, brother. <laughs> Hitting you from left and right, from be, from behind and so forth. And that takes a toll on your body. Mm-hmm. So when people want to retire, like Jim Brown, he, he retired early. He could have done more. He definitely could have done more. But he actually not only had a good career but making he movies. A, he had a good acting career, too. He, he even made more money make, making exactly. movies. Same thing with Fred Williamson. Yeah, exactly. Fred, and you know what we asked him, Fred Williamson? about black exploitation flicks and he said no they were just movies to me and mm-hmm. it's true if you think about it but you know they always got to put a thing on it but let's go back let's go this right quick because we got a lot of sports seattle seattle's four and one yeah and they're actually uh i think four one and one right now because Not, yeah. last night they played the cardinals yes the final score 
was six to six. Well, according each to this, team, the one with no ties, but each okay. team yeah. had a chance to win the game with a chip shot field goal. The Seahawks had a chance to win it with a 23 yarder, missed off the off the post, yeah. off the left upright. Right. The Seahawks had a chance to win it with a field goal. Mm-hmm. It went wide right. Mm. So because of two butchered field goals, we wound up having our first tie in an NFL game in two years. Now let's let's go this right quick. Let's go a little faster. It's Arizona three and three. Three, three, and one now. Okay. <laughs> Los Angeles, three and four. The yeah. Rams, that's and, the Rams. and just yesterday, the Rams played the Giants in London on a. On we'll on get a, to them. We'll yeah. get to the Giants, but my point is San Francisco is one and four, one and six. You know what's happening. The there. worst team in the, in the NFC and right now, by da- far. And they were a damn good team at, at one point. Did I uh, mention uh, Minnesota? Yeah, I mentioned Minnesota 5-1. and one. Minnesota played Philadelphia yesterday in a battle of two really good, really good teams. Carson Wentz this time did not have to be called upon right. to win the game. It was the Eagles' defense mm. that showed that they can be an integral part of a big, of a big game. Not only that, but Sam Bradford pretty much uh, – got exposed for being the quarterback that he is, which is mm-hmm. mediocre and uh, with not a lot of eye-popping numbers. Not only that, but he f- went back to uh, some really bad habits of not taking care of the football. Yeah, Green Bay 4-2. and two. Green Bay wound up, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Packers played yesterday, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, they did, and I think they won. <laughs> Who was the team that the Packers played against I yesterday? Actually, I don't know. All I know right now is their numbers because Detroit is four. Unless the Packers four. had a, a bye. Yeah, it could have been. Uh, Green Bay was 4-2. and two, Detroit is 4-3. and three, And Chicago's 1-6. and six. Chicago's another say? terrible team. And Detroit. Detroit, give them credit for really hanging in there. I, I mean, they're – Pretty much going with a hodgepodge of receivers right now that Calvin Johnson is retired, but they're actually playing not great, but they're 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 pretty, they're they're doing reasonably well right now. Atlantis, it's the defense that's right. been keeping them in this. Atlantis four and three, uh, Tampa Bay is three and three, and for the record, the Packers wound up playing against the Bears. The Bears this past uh, Thursday night. And the Packers came away with a 26 to 10 victory. Look at that. The latest, this, by the way, this was the 191st game that those two teams have played against each other. It's the oldest rivalry in the NFL. And hopefully they'll continue that rivalry. Oh, they're, they they're definitely going to continue the rivalry. As long as they get ratings. That's what it's about. Mm-hmm. Uh, Atlanta, you know. Atlanta let a game really get away from them. Four and three. Mm-hmm. Tampa Bay, three and three. Tampa's a 500 squad, but to be honest with you, no, they're a very the tough, tough team to figure out. Yeah, because I see them as a team that can only go as far as Jameis Winston can take them. Right, correct. As talented yeah. a quarterback as he is, which Jameis Winston are you going to see? Are you going to see the Jameis Winston that can make plays with his are feet you and see Jekyll or Hyde? <laughs> yeah, he's basically a Jekyll or Hyde quarterback. Okay, New Orleans. I mean, uh, let me see. I said Tampa Bay three and three. New Orleans two and four. New Orleans is a big time disappointment. And Carolina is one and five. <sighs> oh, that that hurts. An absolute joke. They. It, it's they really were a good it, team too. At one point, they were too, last year's we, Super yeah, Bowl exactly. participant, and now they have taken such a a, a really loud. Fall now, with a thud. Now for the the East again. We're still in the East, the NFC East, and now it's Dallas five and one. Dallas had a had a the weekend off, but right that, now that 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 quarterback change is gonna is gonna bite them in the rear end. Watch how they're gonna play this is beyond me. I still say they they need to keep Dak Prescott. Because I, I think so too. He's really, you know what, established what some chemistry. Yeah, and he's Go established some works. some chemistry with uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Not only that, but Prescott is just so brilliant the way he sees the ball down the field. But the pro- I don't think he's committed a turnover but yet this the, year. The problem that you have is that you're paying a guy a significant amount. You see, you got to think uh, financial stuff now. 
you're paying a guy a significant amount of money to have him sit down. A pro bowler who's gotten there, he's a pro bowler, he's gotten you, he's gotten you to the dance, the problem is he's never married you. You know, he's never he never got married. He, he's always he's always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. He'll get you there for some reason, so forth. Some people say, get you know, get rid of him. Jones is in love with this guy. Now yeah. you have this other gentleman who's doing just as good as him. I say keep him until he can. If you want to win, if if you if your mindset is to win the football game. And to get to the top, keep what you have until it breaks down. That's it. Yep. That's it. And let me know? correct myself on a couple of things. One, yes. uh, the Packers beat the Bears this past Thursday night. Yes. Secondly, uh, as far as uh, the Cowboys are concerned, the Cowboys have the Eagles next uh, weekend. Yeah. It would have been so great to see Dak Prescott and Carson Wentz, the well, two rookies, uh, in this particular game, the Eagles are four and two. Mm -hmm. That's and the Eagles the not only have they been uh, playing well because Carson Wentz has been a real savior for them, taking yeah. the snaps from center. They're also really much better defensively. Washington's four and three. Washington, uh, quite frankly, wound up losing a game that could have gone either way, but in this case, it was Matthew Stafford really. Uh, Coming through in the clutch when he was supposed to. And Giants, four and three as well. That's a tight division. That yeah. is a really, really. It's tight really, really. Division. That might be the best division in the league right now. That is the, the NFC division. East. And speaking of the Giants, they had the Rams in London yesterday on a rugby field, which, which had some rather unforgiving playing surfaces. Yeah, the rugby. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. for the second straight game, the Giants came from 10 nothing down to win. Oh, but it was wow. the way that they came from behind. Tell them how, for those well, people that didn't see. After um, the Rams capitalized on a Giants turnover to take the lead 10 nothing, the Giants got themselves a field goal, and then they uh, pretty much exposed uh, the Rams quarterback to being exactly what we thought that he was which is an unproven commodity who, quite frankly, needs to be a second or third stringer on, on somebody else's team. Case Keenum is not the, the answer for the Rams. They need to go to Jared Goff. But that's beside the point. The point is the Giants picked off four Case Keenum passes, two of which were not even his fault because they should have been caught by the receivers, first of all. But one of them became a pick six. Another led to... A really good drive that the Giants have, that the Giants had. The joke. Yeah, and they wound <laughs> up uh, coming away with the victory. Now, as far as the Jets are concerned, uh, what a big win for the Jets yesterday because it snapped a four-game losing streak. But quarterback receiver, you know. Did you see <laughs> on the NFL Network yesterday? This is how dig. This is how big of a hole Ryan Fitzpatrick has dug for himself on the NFL Network. Just yesterday, Ladanian Tomlinson, an ex-Jet, by the way, right. was doing his commentary. Right. And what do we see? We see a meme of Fitzpatrick, uh, like uh, the Michael Jordan crying meme. Oh. It was Ryan Fitzpatrick's mug saying that re re replaced by Michael Jordan Fitz in tears. Fitzpatrick is saying that the brass has lost faith in him. You know, you're five. You got to try something. Well, him. if you hadn't have thrown 11 picks, you would not have lost that faith from your bosses. But you know what? Here we go. Now let's go to the. And uh, the Jets have the Browns next week. Yeah. That is a game the Jets are supposed to win. win. Yeah. Well, but I if see. they don't, shame on them. Yes. Fool me once. But you know what? Um. The New York Rangers and the Islanders, they're playing as well. And you know how we're covering it. We're, we're going to cover baseball, too, because that baseball is a hot topic right and now. And the Rangers had such an important weekend. Exactly. Not only did they <clears throat> win in D.C., they won the second of a back-to-back -back at home, which is, a, which is a really, really difficult thing to do. Having to play back-to-back -back games, one at, on the road, one at home, or vice versa, Especially considering that um, 
that they had to go from D.C. back to the Garden is a, is a really difficult thing to do. But yesterday, they went up against a Phoenix team that, quite frankly, they were, co- they were much better than. And they wound up getting uh, what turned out to be the game-winning goal, goal! in order to uh, come up with the victory. <laughs> and the Islanders stay hot at home, too. You know yep. what? They're doing very good at home. And, you know, that's a team that I, I – I, I, I swear I wish the Islanders and the Rangers would not be on the same in the same division because I would love to see them in the cup fighting. Well, let me tell you, unfortunately, that's going to that's not going to be happening anytime soon. I mean, it would make for great drama if those two were to play each other for a Stanley oh, Cup. For cry- like that, that w- tell you what, though, games years before before the, the Islanders were kings. I mean, they they went, you know, they won one. I think they won what four straight. Mm-hmm. Good God Almighty! Really Maybe just, oh, if they decided to change the playoff format, I wish they did. Where instead of going by conference, they would just reseed all sixteen playoff teams by record. Regardless of conference affiliation, maybe you would get a Rangers versus Islanders Stanley Cup down the road. I tell you something, I really, I really wish that would happen. But you know what? Uh, anybody else? How, how, how is the hockey doing in general? What do you well, say about the hockey? Right team? now, the Rangers are off to a pretty decent start. They've won four of their first six. Okay. Well. As far as, as far as the Islanders are concerned, they're right at. 500. They're three and three right now. You got the records of all the teams there. Go yeah, ahead, the Rangers spit is, it out. Spit it out. The Go Rangers ahead. are four and two. Right. Right now, um, the Islanders have a three and three record. They're 500 right now. Okay. Who the else? The Devils are two two and one. Right. Elsewhere in the metro- in the Metropolitan Division, there's mm-hmm. Washington, which is three one and one. Right. Pittsburgh, which is the defending champion, mm-hmm. is three and two and one. Right. Philadelphia is two two and one, while Columbus is two and two. Then you have Carolina at one and two. Mm. So in the Atlantic Division, right. you have Montreal, which uh, really caused a lot of controversy when they traded away PK Subban. Mm. Doesn't look like they're doing too badly right now. They're four zero oh, and one. Wow. Well, now how much of a controversy is that when you win? Well, well, it's only when you're losing. That's when it's mm-hmm. a controversy. When you're winning, oh, it's a great trade. And Tampa Bay's four and one. Detroit's four and two. Florida, which, by the way, has 44-year-old Yaramir Yager oh, wow. still, still at the top of his game. Didn't I tell you about didn't I, what, I, what, I, what I was talking to you about age before? Ladies and gentlemen, it's true what I'm saying. It, it's, it's, it's just a matter true. of whether these guys keep in shape. And exactly. these guys who play hockey, some of them can last until their late 40s. I remember yeah. Chris Chelios played when he was 50. Yeah, yeah. And, and remember when they didn't have to wear uh, helmets and so forth? Those were the good old days. That's because they didn't, they weren't gunning for their heads and so forth. Now, yeah. The more you're protected, the more these people are going to cheap shot you. Yeah. The more, the less protected you are. That's what the old adage is. But you know what? Yeah. That's what they say. So Florida's three one and one. Yes. Boston and Ottawa have the same records, which is three and two. Right. Toronto, which has a. Uh, that number one draft pick, Austin Matthews, who, by the way, scored four goals on opening night and has been just lights out for them ever since. Wow. One, one, and three. And Buffalo's one, two, and one. Now, going out west. Go ahead, quick. quick Edmonton's quick, quick. the Let's best team in the Pacific Division right now. They're five and one. Vancouver's four, one, and one. San Jose's right at 500. They're three and three. Anaheim's two, three, and one. The Los Angeles Kings are two and three. Calgary's one four and one, any and Arizona's con- one and four. Any controversy there in any of the teams that you just mentioned? None. None. So None. anybody's where they're supposed to be at. Mm-hmm. Oh, very good. The only thing is, uh, the Kings are, are going to be without Jonathan Quick, their best goalie for a long time, because he he has a really serious groin injury, and the backup to him. He has an injury of his own, so the Kings are going to be in dire need of a goaltender. Yes. As far as the Central Division, St. Louis is 4-1-1, and one, Minnesota's 3-2-1, and one, Colorado's 3-2, three and, and the Chicago Blackhawks are a 500 team right now at 3-3. Three and three. Dallas is 2-2-1, two, two and one, while Nashville and Winnipeg have the same exact record, wow. which is 2-3. and three. Wow. Now, going now, now that we've covered that, now the next thing we should – should we cover basketball for a minute? You got the basketball lineup. Because yeah, because the season starts tomorrow. <laughs> the season starts tomorrow. Season starts tomorrow. The Jets, I mean the Jets, the Knicks, 
and the Nets. All right, baby. Let's get basketball. It's, it's going to turn me on now because it's the New York Knicks. You know, the, the supposed second power team to the Golden State Warriors. In the Eastern is, Conference or in the league no, in general? In the league in general. They, they're calling themselves the second best because Kevin Durant went to a fantastic team. And can you blame Kevin Durant? The man wants to win a championship, you know, cup, whatever. I mean, for God's sakes, if he wants to win, let him go. He gave you enough years. He, went, he gave you enough years in the other team, and they couldn't do it. So let him go. I mean, if the point is – it's about winning the game. You know, it's about getting to the goal, getting the ring, getting the cup, whatever it takes. Some people say, you, you know, you shouldn't do that. You should be loyal and so forth. What are your thoughts? Because he, here's a, again, let, let me use, for instance, Dan Marino. Yeah. There's a guy that played in Miami for God knows how many years. 17 stayed, years. Stayed loyal to them and so forth, but he didn't win the ring. Yep. Right? Mm hmm Okay. Here's a guy, Kevin Durant, still a young dude. He's goes retired to, go, now. Go, 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 yeah, go, goes to a team now. Yeah. Goes, goes to a – not Kevin Durant. I'm sorry. Uh, Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett. I'm went sorry. from uh, Minnesota to Boston. His first full year in Boston, he wins an NBA title. Look at that. So that my point is, what is it – what's it worth more to you? Being loyal to a team and to a city, or winning the goal. That's the that's the that's the one million dollar question. But if I can be serious for a moment, first of all, to answer your question, yes, loyalty in sports died years ago. Second of all, there is nothing that is more phenomenal and more obsessive. For any athlete than winning an NBA title, exactly. a Super Bowl, a World Series, or a Stanley Cup. There are, there are athletes who go two decades without winning a championship. Yeah. I, I think of guys like Tony Gwynn, the late Tony Gwynn. Yeah. He played in two World Series but could never win the big one. Yeah. That, that's a shame. What about Don Mattingly? A Yankee, yeah. a proud Yankee yeah. for 13 so, years, and the, and never won, won a single as championship. A player, as a player, as a coach, he won, but as a player, he didn't. And he was one of the best in the league. That's my whole point. You know, so everybody's like when, uh, what's his name? The, uh, LeBron James, when he left and went to Miami, oh, how sacrilege. Oh, let me burn his shirt and so forth. The man won a championship game. He That's may have, what he wanted. He may have gone about making the change you know the wrong right, way, right, yeah, exactly. but he still Went won back. two titles with the Heat, right. and he won a third title with the Cavaliers. Right, but I'll tell you something. You're right. It's the way he did it because they had a 20-minute press conference on him, and he decided on TV that he was going to leave. Instead of doing it the proper way, going, listen, I'm just packing it up and leaving. No. They gave him a third, I think a half hour, I think a half hour yeah. time on ESPN. Mm -hmm. and, and they said, okay. And he blah, was blah, at blah. the Boys and, and then, Girls Club of yeah. Greenwich, Connecticut. Then my, 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 that's my point. I mean, for God's sakes, if you, if you want to leave, leave. Just say so, leave, and, you know, shake hands. They would have still been pissed off, but mm -hmm. not, not the way they were pissed off. This guy here leaves and goes to Golden State Warriors. Right now, and what did they do? They burn his shirt. He's unloyal and so forth. The man gave you, what, four years? Nine, nine years, years nine with that years, franchise. Nine years, and they still couldn't win. He tried his best. He's going to a team. He wants to try to win again. That is the goal, to win the goal. Then go back to your team and be loyal afterwards. But it's self. It, now, it, does that mean that you're a selfish person? No, when not you, even. When doesn't you want, it, when doesn't you want make, to win the gold, not does that even. mean that no. you're selfish? When it comes to winning a championship, people should be selfish. But when it comes to money, people don't necessarily have to be selfish. For a championship, you better believe it. But for a big, fat contract, not so much. It the, should not the, have to be that way. The, you have people that say, okay, contract versus championship. Contract versus championship. 
I'm surprised that been, I'm surprised a lot people. of these athletes don't go for the title a little bit more. You know, and and they're trying to diminish that like they did in um, like they did in the NFL because remember Dallas was a powerhouse team. Yeah, Minnesota was a powerhouse team. I mean, they didn't. And then free anything. agency changed and, and, everything. I mean, free agency, you know, and also the salary cap changed everything. Actually. Yeah, it's not mostly it's salary cap because people wanted to to play in the even playing field, but now you're getting supposedly these super teams that are coming yeah. up. And there and, and nobody is happy about the so called super teams at all. It's a you know, and you know what? Whereas the three sports have their salary caps, mm-hmm. baseball has free agency, yet they only go by arbitration. And will never ever go with a salary cap. No, the union no. will never they allow a strong, salary they, cap. They have the strongest union. The the baseball organization has the strongest union. You can't beat that. You're absolutely right. And also, where those three sports had multiple strikes, yeah. baseball has gone more than twenty years they without a strike. single work stoppage. Baseball yes, had they, baseball they had, had nineteen seventy two. Yeah. 1981, yeah. 1985, spring training 1991, mm-hmm. and then August 1994 into May right. 1995. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, there has not been one single work stoppage. You know, they came close in 2002. They actually l- literally went to the last hour mm-hmm. to get a deal done. Yeah. And speaking of getting deals done, right. there's a chance the NBA could have a new CBA with the union. Suppos- really? Yep. Supposedly, it's going to be for seven years mm-hmm. with an opt-out clause after the sixth year, and they're going to keep the one-and-done rule now, for the draft. Now, let me ask you, for those people that don't know, because we got seven minutes left, we got we to gotta get to this quick because we got to talk about baseball, too. Yeah. But I want to know, what does this, the CBA do? What, the the collective bargain. Because the, yeah, cause there's people out there that say, well, we're going to play basketball in the CBA. What does that do? I mean, the collective bargaining agreement in the NBA is similar to the CBAs in the other three major sports. It's basically a contract between all of the owners and all of the players. They're supposed to split all of the revenue right. from salaries in, in uh, playing the game or running the game to revenue. They're supposed to s- split the salaries all the way down and there's also other technicalities that they have to look at for for example um certain rules changes that they want to put in the game like the one and done rule for the uh for the nba which by the way uh when you really think about it i still think the nba should consider baseball's rule either apply for the draft after high school or if you want to go to college go to college for three years then you declare you know what? That's a tough one because, again, if you break, you know, if you hurt yourself, you're done. Yeah. Your knees shot and so forth. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a tricky thing to do. You know that that's really tricky. But you know what? Uh, the New York Knicks, I think, have a very good shot if everything goes well. If everything, and Derek went, Derek Rose won his uh, his his court. Yeah, case. that case is officially closed now. Let's how see the, him how keep his react. health. Yeah, how are the people going to react to that since he won the case? Because that's another thing. Once you win, that's it. They'll put that on the back burner right no, now. They're just try. worried about his, his good health or what's left of it. Well, again, but you know how New York media is. Yeah. You know, well, media in general, they'll, they'll go, the first thing they'll go is, well, the case, how was the case? Is it affecting you and so forth? And if he, if he, if he does bad, oh, the case is bothering you. And he won the case. Drop it. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. The Knicks, I think, have a good shot this year. At, I don't think it's a guarantee. At, 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 the, at the playoffs. I'm not saying that they're going to go all the way. I think they have a – if they stay healthy and so forth, they have a good shot. The New York Nets. The Brooklyn the Nets, Brooklyn you mean? Nets. Here's the difference oh. between the Knicks and the Nets. The Brooklyn Nets are guaranteed – to be the worst team in the NBA. With no and picks. that's saying a lot considering that the Sixers are in the same division. With, with no picks. The Nets have, have, Nets have no picks. And the Nets have to trade draft picks with the exactly. Celtics next year. Yeah. And they owe them another draft pick in 2018. Exactly. So the Nets are struggling. But I think and there's another big thing in, yeah. involving the NBA, too. What? It's the it's, uh, 
all the address changes that these players underwent. Yeah, and and you mentioned yeah. the Knicks. And they're going to start wearing logos mm -hmm. uh, on their shirts. And this is also the 70th anniversary mm -hmm. of the NBA. Oh, wow. And there were a whole lot of changes, literally. Well, For example, Derrick Rose and Joachim Noah going to the Knicks along with Courtney Lee. Yeah. Jeremy Lin went to the Nets, of course. Al Horford to the Celtics. Kevin Durant, you mentioned, yeah. went over to the Warriors. Right. And there was a, a whole lot of uh, other Mostly, changes yeah. that wound up taking place. The guy from Atlanta, he went back to Atlanta, the center. Because mm -hmm. he couldn't play with the Lakers. He couldn't play with, with uh, the Rock. And Dwight and Howard, that is, uh, Howard, from the Rockets from, to his hometown so, Hawks. Yeah, because D'Antoni, <coughs> I don't know how D'Antoni still has a job, but okay. You know what? Let's go last but not least. Uh, the Cubs are going to play the Cleveland Indians T I'm starting sorry, tomorrow I'm night. Sorry, we didn't. We took so long in this, well, but it's um, funny you mention this because on the same night that the World Series starts in Cleveland, yes, the Cavaliers are going to start their NBA season uh, in Cleveland. Wow! And it, also tomorrow is going to be such a big night. Yes, for Cleveland curse. sports fans. Now talk to me about the curse. Whose curse is going to end first? The curse of the Billy Goat. Or the curse of the Cleveland Indians. Or my, or my, my, my thing to go and, and be borough president. <laughs> All kidding aside, you consider what Cleveland has had to go through. The drive, the fumble, Michael Jordan's shot, which beat the Cavaliers. The decision that LeBron made the first time. Yeah, that was horrible. You name it, every sort of heartbreak that they have had to go through has been right there. Yeah, the well, tomorrow, too. well, this past June, they didn't have to be ridiculed anymore. Yeah. Now, if the Indians win the World Series, that's going to make two titles, two titles in the span season. of five months that the city of Cleveland has won. And but think about Chicago. The oh, the Cubs. From 1908 to the Billy Goat Curse to the Black Cat to Leon Durham, to Steve Bartman. Uh, that is what Chicago Cubs fans have had to go through. Yeah. This World Series is for every single Cubs fan. That was there the last time they played in a World Put Series, this much way. less this, uh, won one or this, lost one. This World Series, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be fun. This is going to so, be a lot of fun. Because whoever wins, I'm, I'm you know – not for nothing, but I, I want the Cubs to win because God only knows. They, they, that, that poor team hasn't won in God knows how many Quite years. frankly, that franchise, that franchise deserves they it both, more. They both deserve it. They, do, they both they deserve, deserve it more, but the Cubs really deserve it more. They, they deserve this for their fans. And you got ex-Yankee relievers to convert. That's, that's, that's another thing. You know. Whereas Arold Chapman is the closer for the Cubs, there's Andrew Miller, who's been lights out for the Indians ever since he got traded. Yeah, you know. He's, and, been, he's been unscored and upon. Chapman it may come back to the Yankees. Th that's uh, the hot rumor that's been going which, on. Which he, I hope he does. I hope he does. I hope, I hope he does. That's all I'm saying. And he, even though he had a problem case, too. Yeah. See, well, but Domestic like, abuse. Yeah, again, another one. But he won his case, too. He settled it as well. So, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if I'll be back next Monday. I think Eric will be back next Monday. But, Jamie, thanks. It, Thank you again. It's been, it's been great. Anytime you need me, just call me. Will do. And that's my farewell for, for God, I don't know how many months now. I don't know. Yeah, long, I, long time. I, I, I don't know how when I'll be back again. But thanks. Thank thanks. you again. Thank, thank you. Thank you for, for having me back. It's been fun. It's been a fun, what, three times? Yeah. Uh, last show. Including the... the Eric's show. Yeah. And, and this show. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to contact me at homeinvadedrightshow.com or at Facebook, Hector Bosa. Remember, I'm running for president. I'm running for borough president, ladies and gentlemen. And They will not you know take you it from as a, a hole joke in the wall. Or don't take it as a joke. I don't care. Anyway. Uh -huh. For those that believe me. For, for everyone me. here, I'm Jamie. I'm Hector. Good night, everyone. Good night.